Hey guys, I'm Grady, uh, and today we're going to take a deep look at the Neuro3 editor for Encounter. Um, so we're going to build a preset together, take a look at a few different engines, and sort of show you the lay of the land, as well as uh, dive into some sort of unique things you can do and different sounds. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, I have the editor for Encounter pulled up, which you can find by plugging in your pedal and selecting it over here. Um, you can also get to this page uh, by opening any community preset, uh, even if you don't have the pedal, and start playing with it yourself. So over here, as you can see, we have our pedals that uh, we've added to Neuro by plugging them in through USB. Um, if we expand this window, we can get to our presets that are burned onto the pedal already. Right now they're all blank. Um, we can recollapse that. And then over here on this panel, uh, we have our sort of preset um, explorer. So right now it's on the community page, so you can see things that other people have published uh, for all pedals, but you could filter this down to encounter if you wanted. Um, we have factory presets. We have things that you've liked. So this is a really great place to store stuff that you find in the community that you really like uh, and want to revisit later. Um, your published presets, uh, which we'll get into later, how to do that. And your library, which is where you save presets uh, that you've created with your with the editor, but you might not want to put them on the pedal yet. And this is all in the cloud, so um, it it's not necessarily tied to the pedal. You could put this if you have multiple encounters. You could put these on any of them, and they're tied to your account up here. So, without further ado, there, let's get into the editor. Uh, so this is our sort of revamped Neuro three editor for Encounter. Uh, we tried to incorporate some of the design elements from the pedal and just make it uh, a little more intuitive, a little more fun to play with, uh, and easier to get right into. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and gauge both sides here using the power switch so we can uh, see these knobs. And right now I just have a pretty basic preset pulled up, just resonant into hypersphere is kind of our default sound for this pedal. And the editor is split into a few different blocks. Um, up top here we have our routing options, so you can go split stereo, so one engine on the left, one engine on the right. Uh, parallel, where uh, the engines are operating in parallel and then mixed together at the end, and Cascade, where the left side flows into the right side. Um, we have a tap tempo block, so you can tap in a tempo. And then down here, we have a sort of a mixing panel for each side. So you have mix, level, and two EQ controls, just treble and bass cuts um, for each engine. And then we also have common controls for each engine that don't change. So for the delays, that's delay feedback, um, so how fast your repeats decay, uh, some sort of modulation depth, and modulation rate. Uh, and on the reverb side, we have pre-delay, uh, feedback, which you could also think of as uh, the decay or regeneration of the reverb, uh, and then again, mod depth and mod rate. And then um, something we've done that's unique to Encounter is added these sort of designer panels over here. So these are going to have your custom engine specific controls. This will change uh, depending on which engine you select. Um, and it, it might have anywhere from four to six sort of unique controls that really focus on one element of the engine that we wanted to bring to the forefront. Um, with Nemesis and Ventress, you might have had more options overall, but with uh, Encounter, we really wanted to give you all of the sort of basic options you need to craft your tone and then uh, some really fun controls so you can just start building soundscapes right away without worrying too much about the nitty gritty of, uh, of the knobs. So let's, um, let's build a sound together. Uh, something I wanted to do with this series is sort of focus on a specific engine and uh, specific ways you can use that engine in, in um, a unique manner that you might not have thought of otherwise. So today I want to talk about the Resonant engine, uh, which is sort of a love child between the Resonant analog engine on um, Nemesis and the Sweeper engine on Nemesis. So it it has that Resonant analog um, sort of timbre to the repeats. It sounds like, you know, a nice chirpy bucket brigade delay, um, but it also has uh, a Resonant filter. 
And on Nemesis, there was only this one filter um, that would only operate on the first delay tap. Uh, and here we've added a second resonant filter. So you have separate filters on each tap. They're linked together with these controls, um, but that way you get uh, real stereo sweeping effects uh, if you want, which is pretty cool. So the first thing I'm going to do, because like I said, I want to focus uh, specifically on this low pass filter uh, that we've put in on resonant and how you can use that in ways not just for the resonant delay. Um, I'm actually going to put it on the right side. So another cool thing about Encounter that you might have seen is you can run any of our delay engines, any of the reverb engines on either side of the pedal. Um, so let's go ahead and switch this right side to delay. And it's already on resonant, which is nice. And let's change this to a nice clean delay sound. So maybe drum echo. Um, just nice multi-tap delay. So I'm going to turn resonant off for now. So we just hear what drum echo sounds like by itself. This is just the default tone. Just kind of classic tape, uh, multi-tap, echo rec kind of thing going on there. Um, and now let's turn on the resonant delay and let's tap in a tempo so that they sync up together and hear what they sound like together. Um, and we're in cascade, so the drum is flowing into the resonant, which is a little funky, but um, sounds cool. So you can hear the delays are tempo synced together there. Um, but that's not really what I want to do here. I want to just use the filter. And the filter is actually not engaged right now. You can see that control one, filter depth is at zero, and filter mix is already at, is also at zero. Um, but what I want to do is use this filter to color the repeats of the drum echo without adding any extra delay from the resonant. So the first thing I'm going to do is just bring this delay time all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to engage the filter. And this is control one on the pedal. If you do this, the filter mix automatically jumps up to 100%. Um, I'm going to increase the mix a little bit just so we can really hear that filter. And I'm going to turn down the signal rate reduction that's part of the uh, default sound for resonant, um, just so, so we really just hear that filter sweep. And that's going to sound like this. So you can hear those big sweeps uh, on the on the drum taps, which is pretty cool. Um, we're not using this as a delay. We're really just using it as an LFO controlled low pass filter. Um, another thing that you could do here, uh, if we might get into this in another video, uh, but you have external control available to you with the encounter. So you can go up here to external controls. You could enable this and you could assign uh, this option parameter to any of the parameters you see in the editor window. Um, so if we wanted to use this as say kind of like a wah uh, or con you know a control with an expression pedal, uh, we could configure that and uh, tie it to filter cutoff. Um, and how you might do that, I mean, I can show you just kind of in the editor what that might look like. If we turn this down, um, but then we turn filter mix back up. Uh, if you play. You can hear that filter sweeping. So you could tie that to an expression pedal and just use this as a wah. I mean, I can turn the left side off here uh, and just have it, you know, I'll turn the mix all the way up. Um, so now this is just acting as a filter on my dry signal. So that's pretty fun. Um, but I'm going to set this back up so that we get the sweeps. Uh, filter cutoff still in a good place. I'm going to increase the cue a little bit just so that the sweeping is a little more pronounced. And let's do something uh, even a little funkier. Instead of passing a delay signal, into this resonant filter, let's pass a reverb in. So I'm going to engage this, switch it over to reverb. Let's go with hypersphere because that has a lot of other modulation options. That would be fun, I think, to mix along with these filter sweeps. Um, so without the filter, our default hypersphere sound sounds like this. Really nice, big, almost hall-like reverb. Now I'm going to engage the right side again. And let's hear those filter sweeps across the reverb tail. I'm going to bring down the mix a little bit here. So right off the bat, we've got a pretty much completely different sound going on. Uh, that's pretty unique, a filter sweep uh, reverb. 
And if we want to layer this, you know, get some even some more movement going on, uh, we have a phaser over here on hypersphere. And you have a lot of options with the phaser. You can control the depth, uh, the speed, um, the feedback, you know, if you want to get kind of quacky. Um, and we also have this distortion option, uh, which I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, just to make this a little more sort of sci-fi-esque. Sounds like this. And now I'm going to bring in the phaser. So now we've got two types of modulation going on. We've got this phaser, this big slow phaser sweep, and this big slow um, filter sweep. Um, but we can add even more movement to this if we increase the modulation depth on hypersphere as well as the modulation depth on uh, resonant, which will give us sort of a chorusy sound, um, just to just to add even more movement to the sound. <laughs> Like I said, the nice thing about this is we have this sort of sweep thing set up without the delay on the right side, and we can pick uh, any reverb or delay that we want to send into that, uh, or just our dry signal. Um, so that's a it's a really cool thing I think you can do with the Resonant Engine, uh, and I wanted to show you guys sort of the, the flexibility of that and what's possible. Uh, and the last thing uh, that I want to go through is something we're calling sound check, which is a feature we added this year to Neuro 3. And you can see this little player down here. Uh, it might be new to you. Um, and what this does is it's actually a perfect recreation of the processing that's happening on the pedal, but in Neuro itself. We have a selection of clips you can pick from here um, to sort of trial your preset uh, without even a pedal. So if you don't own this pedal yet, you can download Neuro. Um, you can start playing around with the editor and you can try out these different clips and build presets uh, even before you have the pedal or if you're deciding if it's something that you might want. Um, so for now I'm going to go with, uh, I like this on kind of a strumming sound and 70s rock is a nice sort of strumming sound. So I'm going to select that clip and then we can turn down the input level a little bit uh, so that it's not clipping, which you can see from this little bar over here and we can listen to it. Okay, so I'm really liking the way that's sounding, uh, and I want to save this preset um, to my library uh, so that I can either put it on my pedal or maybe publish it for other people to check out. So I'm going to hit this little drop down arrow next to save. I'm going to go save to library. I'm going to call this giant sweeps and give it a little description to help people out when they're scrolling through the presets. We'll go with filter sweeps, phase sweeps and chorus modulation on top. And as you can see, the clip um, and settings I've set up for soundcheck are already there. You can try it out again if you want uh, to see how it's sounding, but I like it, so I'm gonna go ahead and save. Let me see our preset was saved. Can open up this panel over here, go to my library, and there is my preset. And if I wanna publish this, all I have to do is hit the little publish button uh, it automatically populates the fields with what you've already saved it with, as well as the sound check clip. I'm happy with this. I'm going to hit publish. So now it's going to show up in my published presets and eventually will show up in the community feed for other people to find. Um, and this little thing here, if I hit this, it will play the sound check clip that I've picked um, so that you or anybody else can uh, listen to this preset um, without a pedal. Uh, and then you could open it up in the editor, make some tweaks, listen to it some more etc. It's pretty fun. Thank you guys for watching this video on Encounter. Uh, if you're interested on learning more, uh, you can actually download our Neuro3 software that we just took a look at uh, totally for free, whether or not you own any Source Audio pedals off our website, and you can get started with Soundcheck today, creating your own presets. 
um, and seeing how it sounds for yourself. Uh, if you want to see more about how the pedal sounds or how the hardware works, uh, we have a few other videos online. We have one with me uh, going through each engine individually and, and going really deep on the hardware. And then we have another video with Lyle Brewer uh, playing guitar and going through a lot of our favorite sounds. So hope you enjoy. <laughs>